Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be performing a very important test if you're gonna be working on electric vehicles. Before you get into things, you really wanna make sure everything is safe and you wanna verify zero voltage. So in this video, we are gonna show you the correct procedure on how to verify zero voltage. We're also gonna have links in the description below so you can buy the appropriate tools to do this test. Hope you guys enjoy. Hi, this is Shane again with Knoxville Area Transit. I oversee the EV bus program here in our maintenance shop. I want to go over a quick zero voltage verification. Uh, this is going to be for training purposes only. The bus has already been verified zero voltage wearing all the proper PPE and going uh, using the proper PPE equipment. Um, I'm going to be using a Fluke. I pretty much exclusively only use Fluke products. I got a Fluke 87V. Uh, multimeter here and I got a proving unit. This is going to give me a voltage verification to make sure that my meter is reading properly. It's important to understand what type of voltage you're doing zero voltage verification on. I'm going to start here in my high voltage junction box which comes right out of my ESS, my electrical storage system. That should have a 680 nominal volt DC output. So what I'm going to be verifying zero voltage on here is a DC voltage. So what I'm going to do is I want to open this up. I want to identify some components that are in here. I have a positive bus bar across the top, I have a negative bus bar across the bottom. This negative bus bar is a floating ground that does not contact the chassis anywhere, but I also have a chassis ground inside. So what I want to do is I want to set my meter up to DC voltage, get my meter leads untangled so I can use them safely. So if I'm going to be doing DC testing, I want to make sure that my meter is reading properly. This proving unit has a setting for DC and AC. I'm going to set it to the DC side. I have two test probes here that should give me a reading of 240 volts. I check that. I read my meter. It says 245. That's within spec. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to go ahead and do a positive to positive, negative to negative reading. So I go here to my positive bus bar, my negative bus bar. I see that that reads 0 0.031 volts. That's pretty much zero on the DC. So after taking that reading, I want to make sure that I go back and I prove that my meter is still functioning and I do get a reading. The next one I want to do is I want to reverse polarity. I'm going to take my positive to my negative bus bar, my negative to my positive bus bar, just to make sure we don't have anything that's polarity sensitive. I have zero volts again. I go back and I read my reading and I have 245. Now I want to go back, positive lead to my positive bus bar, negative lead to a chassis ground. Making sure I have nothing bleeding off the chassis ground. I have just a little bit of induction voltage there. We're talking less than a, a, a volt. So we are good to go there. We come back, verify that again, and I'm going to reverse the polarity. I'm going to take my negative to my positive bus bar, my positive down to a chassis ground. I'm getting the same 0.4, which is just probably some kind of an induced voltage. But for all intent purposes, that is zero. I go back, make sure that my meter is reading properly. And I've got 245 volts. Now you could go a little bit deeper and go from negative bus bar to negative ground, reversing polarity there. That pretty much tells me that I am at zero voltage here. This gives me a safe working condition where I can work without voltage being present. Thank you. 